so hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to another session of pib 247 in today's class we are going to talk about the pib news from 12th to 14th of january 2023 so let's begin with the session without any delay and let's talk about the very first question which says the union cabinet has given the approval for renaming of national center one second, yeah. National Center for Drinking Water, Sanitation and Quality as Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee National Institute of Water and Sanitation, which in short is SPM Nivas. Where is this autonomous institution under Ministry of Jal Shakti located? Now, you must be wondering that few days back we have discussed that SPM Nivas has been launched as a body under the Ministry of Jal Shakti. Now, how is it possible that the Union Cabinet has now approved the renaming of National Center for Drinking Water Sanitation and Quality as SPM Nivas. So guys, this, this approval, this approval hai, this is an ex post facto approval, which means ex post facto approval hai, is that with the retrospective effect, it is applicable, right? So this National Center for Drinking Water Sanitation and Quality has been renamed as SPM Nivas retrospectively, right? So I hope this confusion is clear. If there is any confusion, ho, you can ask me in the comment section. So talking about SPM Nivas once again. So the news is this only that Union Cabinet has approved the renaming and now the National Center for Drinking Quality Sanitation, uh, Drinking Water Sanitation and Quality will be known as SPM Nivas, which is Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee National Institute of Water and Sanitation. It was inaugurated, inaugurated last month in the month of December 2022. And it is, you know, it will work as a premier institute to develop capacities in all the states and UTs, right? In all the states and UTs, this institute will develop the capacities in the field of public health engineering, in the field of drinking water, in the field of sanitation and in the field of hygiene through various training programs, uh, which will be given to various stakeholders working in these areas. All right. And yeah, that's it. Uh, about this uh, news and of course the Ministry of Jal Shakti is headed by Mr. Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. His Lok Sabha constituency is Jodhpur in Rajasthan. So where it is located? It is located in Kolkata. Option A is the correct answer without any doubt, right? Option A, Kolkata is the correct answer and where in Kolkata by the way? At a place which is known as Joka. Joka is the exact place in Kolkata and Kolkata is in West Bengal. Moving ahead to question number two, the union cabinet has recently approved to set up and promote a national level multi-state seed cooperative society under MSCS Act of 2002, which is Multi-State Cooperative Society Act. Its membership is open to how many of these, right? So first of all, do remember, this is a very, very important news because union cabinet has given an approval uh, for setting up of three different multi-state cooperative society. One is for seed, one is for organic farming, promotion of organic farming, right? And one is for promotion of export. So three uh, multi-state cooperative societies have been uh, given approval by the union cabinet. So we'll discuss them one by one. So first of all, it is about the multi-state uh, seed cooperative society, which has been, uh, which has been uh, approved under multi-state cooperative societies act of 2002. Now this seed cooperative society, what will it do? It will leverage the strength of cooperatives and transform them into successful and vibrant business enterprises so that we can realize the Sahkar Se Samriddhi vision of the Ministry of Cooperation headed by Mr. Amit Shah. All right. Now functions, ki agar baat kare, so these are the detailed functions. So it will work as an apex organization for everything re related to seeds. And what is everything here? for production, for procurement, for processing, for branding, for labeling, for packaging, for storaging, for marketing and for distribution of quality seeds. So basically every aspect of seed starting from its production to the distribution, everything will be, uh, uh, will be taken care of by this organization. It will also provide a platform for research and development so that we can, uh, you know, we can produce such seeds which which can which will enhance the production uh, of the crops right and to develop a system for preservation and promotion of indigenous natural seeds right this organization will get support from very various ministries but most importantly it will get support 
from the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, ICAR, Indian Council of Agricultural Research, and National Seed Corporation. Right. And finally, its membership is open to all primary to national cooperative society. Right. Jitne bhi primary to national cooperative societies hai, including primary societies, district, state and national level federation and multi-state cooperative societies. All of these societies can become the member of this multi-state seed cooperative society. And all these cooperatives will have their elected representatives in the board of the national society as per its bylaws. Theke? So, jo bhi ek nahi society banegi, usme in sabhi societies ke ek elected representative jayenge. Alright. So, that is all about this society and uh, which are the... Uh, uh, for whom the membership is open. So it is for primary society, district, state, national level, uh, federation and multi-state cooperative society, which means option E, all of the above will be the correct answer. Talking about question number three, so union cabinet has approved setting up and promoting a national level cooperative society for organic products under multi-state cooperative society act, which of the following ministries will provide support to it. So the news is that only un under MSCS Act of 2002, uh, a new cooperative society for organic products has been uh, given approval and it will provide a thrust to organic products from cooperative se sector. The cooperative sector is where the organic products are coming from, they will get thrust. Milega. And how it, will give, uh, how it will provide this thrust? By acting as an umbrella organization for, uh, uh, for uh, by managing various activities related to the organic sector. All right. Now these will be the functions of these, this organization. It will provide institutional support uh, uh, for the organic products. And uh, with this institutional support, what type of support it will provide? It will provide aggregation support, certification of organic product, testing of organic products, procurement, storage, processing, branding, packing, logistic facilities, labeling, marketing, everything. Every kind of support will be provided to the uh, organic products so that we can enhance the production of organic products and we can, uh, you know, uh, widen the sphere of organic products in the domestic market as well as the global, right? To arrange financial assistance to the organic farmers. The organic farmers will be provided with the financial assistance through this cooperative society, right? And this cooperative society will arrange this finance through, through its member cooperatives, right? And it will also manage various activities related to organic sector by providing certified and authentic organic products. Now talking more about it, so it will get support from various ministries like Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Food Processing Industry, Health and Family Welfare and Ministry of uh, Development of Northeastern Region. Right, Ministry of Commerce and Industry headed by Piyush Goel, Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, NS Tomer, Food Processing Industry, uh, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, anyways, he Health and Family Welfare, Mansuk Mandavia, Minister of Development and Northeastern Region, G. Kishan Reddy. I'm forgetting the name of the Minister of Food Processing Industry. I believe it is Pashupati, uh, something like that. Right? If I'm not wrong, it is something like that. Koi nahi. Chalo, main aapko aage bata dunga kabhi. The membership is as, again open to all the uh, same uh, people. Uh, which were, uh, you know, which were there in the previous cooperative society like primary societies, district, state and national level federation, multi-state cooperative society and also the farmer producer organization. Here there is one addition that is FPOs can also be the members and it will empanel accredited organic testing labs and certification bodies who meet the criteria specified by it to bring down the cost of testing and certification. So basically it will also help in bringing down the cost of testing and certification by empaneling an accredited organic testing lab, right? And not only one, various labs will be uh, created, will be empaneled, all right? So that is all about this and which of the following ministries will provide support to it? So the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Food Processing, Health and Family Welfare and uh, Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region. I believe it is Purushottam Rupala who is the minister, if I'm not wrong. So all one, two, three, one, four and five is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number, uh, I'm getting confused between the name of Purushottam Ripala and that person who is an MP from Hajipur. All right, anyways, I'll tell you the name of the minister. Ka. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर इज अबाउट दी थर्ड कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी विच इज अ मल्टी स्टेट एक्सपोर्ट सोसाइटी विच इज विच हैज अगेन बीन अप्रूव्ड अंडर एम एस सी एस एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड टू अगेन द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द मिनिस्ट्री विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मिनिस्ट्रीज विल प्रोवाइड सपोर्ट टू इट सो इट विल बी सेट अप फॉर अंडरटेकिंग एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ ऑल गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस बाई कोऑपरेटिव एंड रिलेटेड एंटिटी सो बेसिकली द आइडिया इज टू प्रमोट द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ दोज प्रोडक्ट विच आर बींग प्रोड्यूस्ड बाई दी कोऑपरेटिव एंड द रिलेटेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन राइट फंक्शन तो क्लियर है इट विल प्रोवाइड थ्रस्ट टू एक्सपोर्ट फ्रॉम कोऑपरेटिव सेक्टर बाई एक्टिंग एज एन एम्ब्रेला ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर कैरिंग आउट एंड प्रोमोटिंग द एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड सपोर्ट इट विल गेट from the ministry of external affairs and the ministry of commerce and industry through their various export related agencies right like we have apida right we have <coughs> other organizations which are, uh, in the country uh, which are promoting the exports right so all these uh, organizations will provide support to this multi state cooperative society for exports right so the two ministries which are providing support to it are ministry of commerce and industry and external affairs which means again option e b and c is the correct answer and now let's talk about another very important news very very important news the union cabinet has approved the new integrated food security scheme so a few days back we have discussed that the government of india has uh, you know has made uh, uh, the all the ration all the ration which 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 were earlier provided under NFSA at uh, you know at certain minimal cost. Now the government of India has uh, made everything free under that NFSA National Food Security Act, right? So they have given a name to this particular uh, scheme, uh, and that is Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana only. कोई नया नाम नहीं है पुराना नाम भी दे दिया है. And the earlier one Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana has been Ended now, ठीक है जो कि दिसंबर 2022 तक चला था अब वो खत्म हो चुका है एंड नाउ दिस न्यू यू नो दिस न्यू इंटीग्रेटेड स्कीम वेयर देर इज यू नो वेयर जहां पे अंत्योदय अन्न योजना और प्राइमरी हाउस होल्ड बेनिफिशरीज जो है उनको मच करके अब सरकार पूरा का पूरा जो फूड ग्रेन है वो फ्री में देगी उस नई इंटीग्रेटेड फूड सिक्योरिटी स्कीम को दे आर कॉलिंग एज अगेन प्रधानमंत्री गरीब कल्याण अन्न योजना राइट right? The question is about what is the duration of this scheme. So let's talk about the news. So the Union Cabinet has approved new integrated food security scheme for providing free food grains to Antyodaya Anna Yojana and primary household beneficiary. So what is the difference? So we have discussed it earlier also that in NFSA there are two types of beneficiary. One is Antyodaya Anna Yojana, which are below poverty line people, and then we have priority households. Uh, and below poverty line maybe they are those. Uh, 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 these are those households which are at the priority right so uh, antyodaya anna yojana people the household get 35 kg per uh, family while in priority household 5 kg per person per month 5 kg per person per month food grain is provided in the case of priority household while in case of antyodaya anna yojana household 35 kg per month per household is provided this shall be continued ye same rahega this shall be continued but now uh, earlier what happened uh, wo earlier uh, kya hota tha ki iske liye kuch minimum price dena padta tha 1 rupaye 2 rupaye 3 rupaye right ye price hota tha but now this price has been abolished and everything will be given absolutely free of cost from now on under the pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana i hope there is no confusion now right Now the launch date is first of January two thousand and twenty-three. The total outlay will be rupees two lakh crore for a period of one year, starting from first January to thirty-first December of two thousand and twenty-three. The Ministry, of course, will be Ministry of Consumers Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, which is again headed by Mr. Piyush Goyal, right? And Piyush Goyal, remember, is also the leader in Rajya Sabha. Now food grains will be provided to all PHH and uh, Antyodaya Anna Yojana beneficiary as per their entitlement under NFSA Act of 2013. And I have already told you the entitlement. And uh, it will subsume the two subsidy schemes of Department of Food and Public Distribution, which are food subsidy to FCI and food subsidy for decentralized procurement states dealing with procurement, allocation, and delivery of food grains to the states under NFSA. So basically. पहले क्या होता था कि जो भारत सरकार है या जो राज्य सरकारें हैं वो इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को इन स्कीम्स के अंडर सब्सिडी दे देती थी टू द फेयर प्राइस शॉप ओनर्स 
और जो भी बेनिफिशियरी थे उनको एक दो और तीन रुपए पे जो राशन है वो मिल जाया करता था बट फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन दीज यू नो दीज सब्सिडी स्कीम्स हैव बीन अपॉलिस्ड एंड एक्चुअली इट नॉट हैव बीन अपॉलिस्ड दीज स्कीम्स विल नाउ सब्स्यूम अंडर द न्यूली क्रिएटेड स्कीम प्रधानमंत्री गरीब कल्याण अन्न योजना और राइट so yeah that is all about this and what is the duration of this scheme that is one year starting from 1st january to 31st december 2023 moving ahead to question number 6 union cabinet again very very important question has approved the incentive scheme the union cabinet has approved the incentive scheme for promotion of rupee debit cards and low value bhim upi transaction purchase person to merchant only low value and low value has not been defined here ठीक है लो वैल्यू मैंने काफी ढूंढा आई कुड नॉट फाइंड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लो वैल्यू भीम यूपीआई ट्रांजैक्शन हियर सॉरी सो फॉर प्रमोशन ऑफ रुपे डेबिट कार्ड्स एंड लो वैल्यू भीम यूपीआई ट्रांजैक्शन व्हिच हैपन बिटवीन पर्सन टू मर्चेंट ओनली पर्सन टू पर्सन भीम यूपीआई ट्रांजैक्शन को प्रमोशन नहीं दी मिलेगा इसमें दो लो वैल्यू भीम यूपीआई ट्रांजेक्शन विच आर टेकिंग प्लेस बिटवीन पर्सन टू मर्चेंट राइट those transactions will be promoted right the question is what is the financial outlay of this scheme so again the union cabinet has approved this incentive scheme so as the name says there there will be some kind of incentive that will be provided to the banks right banks will have certain incentives under this particular scheme for promotion of rupee debit cards and low value bhim upi transaction uh, taking place between person to merchant right it will further deepen the digital payment ecosystem in the country across all the sectors and segments of the population right the financial outlay will be 2600 crores and if i am not wrong last year also last year in the previous financial year also the government has launched a similar scheme to for promotion of rupee debit cards right the duration will be this financial year only that is from 1st of april 2022 to 31st march 2023 which means uh starting from 1st of april 2022 whatever steps have been taken by the banks for promotion of rupee debit cards they will be uh, given the incentives uh, from 1st of april 2022 only right the acquiring banks will be provided financial incentive for promoting point of sale and e-commerce transactions using rupee debit cards and low value bhim upi transaction it will also facilitate building of a digital payment ecosystem across the country i have discussed kar liya and it will also promote upi lite and upi 1 2 3 pay which are the two different versions of upi all right and i believe upi lite and upi 1 2 3 pay have already been discussed in the rbi 247 uh, seven sessions in very much detail right so that's it about this news so what is the financial outlay that's 2600 crores option c is the correct answer i hope this is clear let's talk about the agri clinic and agri business center scheme now so 82 best agri trainers who were trained under agri clinic and agri business scheme and eight nodal training institutes were recently awarded on the occasion of national youth day and that is why it is in news why it is in news because 82 best agri trainers were awarded which have been given the training under agri clinics and agri business scheme they have been awarded on the occasion of national youth day and that is why this uh, scheme is in news so it is our responsibility to discuss this scheme right so you have to identify the incorrect statement about this scheme so let's talk about the scheme and then we will come back to the question but before that what is the meaning of agri clinics and agri business center so basically agri clinics and agri business centers are the centers which provide certain uh, services to the farmers or to the stakeholders these are the services provided by agri clinics these are the services provided by the agri business center you may read it from the pdf theek hai isme kuch samajhne wala ya kuch conceptual nahi hai soil health cropping practices plant protection etc these services are provided by uh, agri clinics and agri business centers provide maintenance and custom hiring of farm equipment sale of inputs marketing linkages entrepreneurship development right so you can uh, give a quick read to uh, uh, the name of these services right now let's talk about the scheme what is the objective agri clinics and agri business center scheme which means which means it is very clear that agri clinics and agri business centers are promoted are being promoted under this particular scheme right now how they are being promoted so basically to transform unemployed youth into self employed agripreneurs 
through a 45 day absolutely free residential training with a provision for availing loan and subsidy from the banks so basically what will happen initially the unemployed youth who are the agricultural graduates they will be provided with a 45 day free residential training on agri clinics and agri business center how to operate agri clinics how to uh, you know be the owner of agri clinics how it will function what benefit it will give to the society so regarding that the training is being provided and then they are provided with a loan actually they they are not provided with a the loan there is a provision for availing loan and subsidy for, from the banks for setting up of agri clinics and agri business center thereby turning these unemployed youth into the self employed youths right launch year hai 2002 mein launch hui thi bahut purani scheme hai ministry it is a central sector scheme launched by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare in collaboration with nabard implementing agency iski hai manage i think ye 2002 mein nahi 2022 mein launch hui thi guys let me check it now currently main isko check kar leta hu uh, i am pretty much confused here 2002 mein ye scheme launch hui thi kya let me check it now tab tak thoda sa wait karo i believe 2002 to bahut purana ho gaya yaar बट कोई बात नहीं चेक कर लेते हैं दो मिनट लगेगा गलत इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं जानी चाहिए बस इसका मिलना भी बड़ा मुश्किल हो जाता है ऐसी चीजों का ये भी बड़ी दिक्कतें हैं स्कीम बहुत ही बेकार चीजें हैं यार क्या बताऊ मैं आप लोगों को बड़ी मुश्किल हो जाती है कभी कभी वेट करो थोड़ा सा एक दो मिनट आई अपोलोजाइज फॉर दिस बट आई जस्ट डोंट वॉन्ट कि मैं आपको कोई गलत चीज बता दू <coughs> Because I doubt की 2002 में लॉन्च हुई है वन सेकेंड जस्ट गिव मी फ्यू मोर सेकेंड्स पता नहीं क्यों कभी कभी डाउट मन में क्लियर हो क्रिएट हो जाता है ये yes, 2002 ही है राइट right. There is no issue. So launch year is 2002 only. There is no problem in that, right? There is no problem. 2002 ही है. One second. Yeah. The implementing agency is Manage. What is Manage? National Institute of Agriculture, Agricultural Extension Management, which is located in Hyderabad, and it is being implemented in different states with a network of 136 nodal training institutes, which are spread across all the states, right? now this scheme seeks to tap the expertise available in the large pool of agricultural graduates so as i told you the agricultural graduates will be tapped under the scheme and they are being provided training uh, to set up the agri clinics and agri business center the beneficiaries are agricultural graduates whether fresher or not whether currently employed or not they can set up their own agri clinic or agri business center and offer professional extension services to innumerable farmers under the scheme right and there is an uh, also a provision for providing start startup training to the agriculture graduates in agriculture or any allied subject uh, in the area of agriculture theek okay? hai so that is all about this scheme so now we have to identify the incorrect statement it is a centrally sponsored scheme i believe this is incorrect only it is a central sector scheme option a is the correct answer rest of the uh, statements are absolutely correct option a is the correct answer yes it was launched in 2002 but it is a central sector scheme not a centrally sponsored scheme right aage chalte hain next question pe question number 8 which ministry has organized marg which is mentorship advisory assistance resilience and growth mentor master class as part of its startup india innovation week and every year we observe 16th january as national startup day starting from the last year 2022 so the ministry of commerce and industry so it is the ministry of commerce and industry uh, which has organized the marg mentor master class in association with zone startup in association with zone startups india all right now this was organized to equip the attendants uh, attendees the jinhone attend kiya tha with effective ways of mentoring startups by enhancing their capacities and knowledge so basically mentors mentors were provided the mentorship right the mentors were provided the mentorship in this mentor master class 
industry stalwarts who possess expertise in the area were the uh, were the mentors of the mentors right objective agar hum marg ki baat kare to objective iska kya hai uh, to provide sector focused guidance hand holding in startup and support to startups through their life cycle uh, right sector focused theek hai like agriculture hai ya industrial hai ya fir education ke area mein hai jis bhi area mein hai to establish a formalized and structured platform the uh, that will facilitate intelligent match making between the mentors and their respective mentees and also uh, it is facilitating the efficient and expert mentorship for startups and thereby it is building an outcome oriented mechanism and remember it is a national mentorship platform under the the flagship program of government of india that is the startup india initiative all right so that is all about this news so which ministry is this it's ministry of commerce and industry and now guys let's talk about the questions in short which do not need much explanation but before that if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join this telegram channel the link is provided in the description and if you want to ask anything related to examination you can follow me here but only related to examination cd baat and no bakwas right question number 9 with which organization ministry of msme headed by narayan tau rane has signed an mou for operationalization of uh, formalization project for bringing informal micro enterprises into the formal ambit very very important question i believe this question has a huge potential for the examination this mou has been signed with sidbi which is small industry development bank of india headquartered in lucknow and headed by mr s raman headed by mr s raman option a is the correct answer Question number ten. Where was the eleventh edition of CII Bioenergy Summit held? CII stands for Confederation of Indian Industry. All right. So it took place in New Delhi. Option C is the correct answer. No need for explanation. Question number eleven. Again, is an important question. REC Limited, in partnership with World Bank, has designed a financing facility under which it will finance the state-owned electricity distribution companies to make them financially viable. Okay. So, what is the total volume of financing available as part of this program? And remember, it is important because there is the involvement of World Bank here, right? World Bank chief is David Malpass. Do remember it? And how much amount is this? It is US dollar one billion. Option B is the correct answer. All right. So, guys, that's it for today's session. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section, and I will see you. in the next session on friday till then keep watching anujindal.in goodbye take care and god bless